Southeast. Shake these motherfuckers out of this money to throw this free ball in this big venue and give out prizes and trophies and awards. Clap, this is the maker of Black Pride. Do it all. The I creator all. of the Heritage I Ball. I do it all. I do it all. Bizarre, bizarre. It My name all. is Lee Soldier Simmons. I am a visual artist, dancer, promoter, and the executive director of New York City Black Pride. Hey everybody, make some noise. Happy Black Pride! Now we're gonna do it one more time. I said happy Black Pride! Y'all know what it is. You'll know the Heritage Ball. Tonight is your night to make a moment, to have a moment. Are y'all ready to do that tonight? Ballroom is a microcosm of society at large. Ballroom now is made up of all different types of people, gay, straight, white, black, every nationality, every age sector of the group. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You ready for a moment? Yeah. We got a girl from Charlie Martin. I yeah. have got a girl, girl, whose pussy is so good. If you threw it up in the air, 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 air. If you threw it up in the air, 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 air. If you threw it up in the air, 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 air. If you threw it up in the air, 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 air. It would turn into sunshine. I have got a girl, girl. For the biggest ball in New York City, it's called the Heritage Ball. It's a free ball. Everyone's here to have excitement. Everyone's here to compete, have fun, acknowledge, give homage, pay respect. Everyone's here for the heart, the love, and the history of ballroom. And we're gonna have fun. There's gonna be drinks. There's gonna be some drama. I hope you guys are here. Stay tuned and be alert because it might happen tonight. <laughs> I want to say a few words. Every year, it takes a lot to raise money for Black Pride here in New York. It takes a lot for me to do this so that all of the events are free. You don't go to anybody else's Black Pride that all of the events are free except New York City. Can I have a round of applause for that? When I came to the ballroom scene, immediately I felt like I was a part of something. Just the warmth of that took me by surprise. I walked into a ball not knowing anybody, and all of a sudden I had an instant family. Family coming together and using these categories to represent themselves. You have your mother, you have your father, and those are the people that represent you with these houses when you go out and compete for your category. There are several different categories. You have your film queen, which is your transgender women who go out and, and vogue. You have your butch queens, which are the feminine boys. And you have your butch queen twisters, which you're still real and you still can vogue. Now they're opening up the category for women, cis women to, to vogue, which is amazing. I, I came to the ballroom scene in 1986, so it was before uh, we really ha began to have a wider public acknowledgement. Also, uh, surprise, surprise, I'm white. Uh, I was not your typical member of the ballroom community, but I came to the balls and I was accepted. I became a member of a house, I became a member of the ballroom community. And as we've seen it continue to grow and embrace all different people all over the world, uh, it's really amazing to see how, how it's grown. My name is Labelina Milan from the Royal House of Milan, and I'm at the Heritage Function today to judge. For the Vogers, the five elements are critical. Your spins, your dips, your hands, you know, catwalk, floor performance, duck walk. I'm looking for all of that. If you're missing an element, you're not going to get my vote. For the fashion categories, absolutely. A tailored look. It has to look like it fits you well. I don't need any waves like you're in the Pacific Ocean. I don't need any ruffles. I just like a nice, clean look, and it can't be fraudulent. First and foremost, it's important for the LGBT community because this is a segment of that community that is often criticized, marginalized. We've been segregated, and yet they take our talent, they take our fashion, they take our dance moves, and they take it into mainstream, and they don't credit the people they need to credit. In general, um, just in the community in general, the talent itself 
it's what you see on the stages. It's what you see on the runways of Paris and Milan and New York. It's ballroom. They just won't give the credit to ballroom. This is our heritage. Who we are is nothing to apologize about. So clap your hands in celebration. Well, the scene started because Crystal LaBeja kicked the motherfucking doors open and said she will not deal with the pageants Miss anymore. Crystal, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the third runner up of the 1967 Nationals. She will not deal with that situation anymore. She will not be judged amongst those girls anymore. And she stormed out. Crystal, where are you going? This is not the time to show temperament. Get back here and stay with the other finalists. Oh, well, you've got to Here was this woman, Crystal LaBeja, who had been walking balls and also participating in this fledging um, pageant drag scene. So it's all part of the sub-drag culture. Do you think she deserved it? There's a famous documentary film that documented this moment in time where Crystal just had had enough of the racial divide of how she looked, makeup, and, you know, and losing in this particular competition. Monique, would you tell her why you didn't come? Because she knew it's Victor Holler. She said, Crystal Darling, don't go. Because you're not going to get it. And that's why all the true beauties didn't come. Thank you. It's in bad taste, and you're showing your colors and stuff. I am. I am doing it bad, but I got an, I have a right to show my color, darling. I am beautiful, and I know I'm beautiful. Nervous, move to the side. Let me win. I will get my tens. Pump to the side. I get nervous. Won't you go to the side? Just move. I get nervous. Move to the side. I'll get ten. Bitch, let me win. Won't you move? Move to the side. I'll get nervous. I'll get ten. Won't you let me walk? I'll win. Let me walk. I'll get my tens. Move to the side. Just let me go. I can't take this. No, so no. Don't you move? Move. 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 We often don't connect it, but it's the whole reason why there are black prides. It's that, you know, these are trans people of color who started these movements. These are trans people of color who were fed up and decided to fight. I always knew that I was a woman inside, but, but growing up in my family, I had to put that on hold because I had to be somebody else for everybody else. As I got older and got wiser and realized that, you know, I can be comfortable in my own skin and live my truth. I started living in my truth seven years ago. After, you know, my drug addiction and my alcohol abuse and the attempt of committing suicide. And when I failed at suicide, that's when I realized that God came to me and said, no, I'm not ready for you, my child. I need you here to live your truth and tell your truth and speak to other people about your truth. It was these trans people that walked in their truth that risked themselves being arrested, that risked themselves being shot with all types of medications and things because it was considered a mental illness. And these things who stood in their truth to stand up to the police and, and corruption and say enough is enough. Years ago, you know, when we started back in the late 70s, early 80s, it was very underground, it was very niche, it was really uh, something very few people knew about. Today, it's really recognized globally. Um, you have people participating in voguing and ballroom events all over the world and it started here it started right here in New York City with this community and that we get to celebrate that and we continue to get to show the world that celebration is really amazing it's a really important cultural event in terms of a historical perspective it's great to see that the ballroom scene has really been embraced by the larger culture by the larger culture of people of color uh, by Black Pride, so it's no longer an underground niche thing, but it's really part of the larger culture that we all live in and all experience today. And an event tonight, is that, that's a real affirmation of that. Uh, the, the acceptance that we have, uh, the cultural influence that the ballroom community has had. There is no ball without music. And you have some of the top amazing DJs who put these beats together. We call it rap. It's called commentating in the ballroom scene. You commentate over that beat, and that person who's voguing can hit every beat that they're saying. Looking for my, 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 looking for my,
Come on, let's in. Legend for a reason, not for a season. Bitch, now give it to me now. Ow, give them all re- a round of applause. Let's see a bitch let it all out. Damn. Bring it back on a count of three. Word. Two for the ready, two for the set. DJ. Let it all out. 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 Bitch, let it all out. 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 Bitch, let it all out. The voice of ballroom is about coming together as a community. Lessons that society can learn about being able to create a house that has someone that's straight, someone that's trans, someone that's non-binary, someone that's gender non-conforming, and all to be in something that's considered to be like a family or a house can show the greater society how we can get along and work together and thrive together. Ballroom has a lot to teach the world. Beat.